Welcome to Everything with Everett. This is a talk show podcast hosted by Everett McConaughey. The purpose of this production is to share thoughts, voices, and information to further a discussion on who we are as individuals, communities, and a global society. Everything with Everett is open to all topics of discussion, faith, science, history, finances, social issues, and, well, everything. Be sure to follow, like, and subscribe. Visit everettpodcast.com for all the details. Hey everyone, I'm back with you. I'm so disappointed. I literally just recorded this 50 minute episode. There was a glitch in the software, hardware, whatever, and it sounded like crap. So my apologies if I sound a little frustrated. It was such a good episode, but it really was just not redeemable. It had this really bad electrical noise in the background. Anyway, after a nice reboot, everything tested fine now. So (laughs) try number two. God bless technology. It's great when it works, isn't it? Anyway, so I'm going to, I can't be as prophetic as I was the first time I you know I I record these podcasts in live takes I don't script it I don't plan out what I'm going to say because I don't want it to sound like I'm reading something to you I want it to be a natural conversation this is how I talk this is the people that know me that are close to me that's why people like this podcast it sounds like I'm with them it's like I'm wherever they are in the world Because this is how I passionately talk about things. So maybe you'll get a little bit of it, but I'm sorry. The the episode I just did was completely, you know, everything. And it was great. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little deflated. But anyway, still, there's a topic that's very important. And I want to still get something out there about it project 2025 donald trump claims he has no understanding about this he doesn't endorse it yada 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 remember the thing about the pill the abortion pill how it was like oh well he wants doesn't believe everyone should have access to that he kind of backstepped some things and remember the little the little hint that he gave (laughs) you got to get elected so in other words As we've seen time and time again, these Trumpers, the MAGA people, they're okay playing politician. They'll say whatever gets you to support them. They want your vote. And then they'll do whatever the hell they want after they're in office because shame on you. You've been fooled twice. So Project 2025, supposedly he's never heard of it, but... It's all the rage among the conservative um, elites, the people that can also afford golden toilets in their top penthouse view skyscrapers. Nothing like the humble origins of the prestigious White House. Remember the comments that he had about how it was below him back in 2016? He recently has, you know, said that he's the greatest president in the country history. The real greatest president ever. There have been a lot of really good ones. To to truly have an ego, to be like, I'm the best. That is so fundamentally not what this country is about. That is so, that is a mindset that is so beyond being something we should put in the Oval Office. The fact that we had it once, whoa. Wake up, America. 
But if we do it again, we're voting to not have the decorum of our federal government. The president is supposed to be unimpeachable. The president is supposed to lead with the goodwill of the people to do what's best. Yes, they're going to have their own opinions and, you know, conservative or progressive leaning ideals. And that does influence, you know, are they more likely to spend a little bit of money to get something good? Are they willing to kind of, you know, shove some people into a war and potentially get some, you know, young kids killed? That's the, the, the real risk that you take with either, either party. But ultimately, the president has to make decisions for all of the country. Not certain people that paid the most money to their election campaigns or re-election campaigns. The greatest president, truly, if you can ever say where there was one, and, and this president, if he was alive today, would never, never accept being called the greatest president. But we all know he was. George Washington was the greatest president this country has ever seen because he was the first president this country has ever seen. This country was so enamored by him. He was at such a pivotal, foundational point of our country. He easily could have become King Washington. He could have been a monarch. They wanted to entomb him they built a crypt underneath the floor of the rotunda of the nation's capital. They wanted him to be buried there like a church, like a king. He didn't want that. So it's an unused room down there. Lots of documentaries about that. But this country was so enamored by him and the founding of our country, we almost slipped into the exact same system that we left. We didn't want to force people to believe in one church. The freedom of religion is also the freedom from religion. I'm not LDS, but it doesn't mean my mom can't worship that, that ideology, that thinking. And if we consecrate one denomination, one church over another. What does that say about the, to the people who are not of that faith? We already have done that in many ways. Our, our, somehow our government decided to put in God we trust on buildings and our currency back in the 60s or 70s. I don't know when that happened. I honestly haven't even looked it up. But that is a fundamental blurring of the separation of church and state. Jewish people don't deserve to, hear, to have that thrown in their faces. Islamic people don't deserve to have that thrown in their faces. Hindu people don't deserve to have that thrown in their faces. But look at all the holidays. Look at all the times you get to, the bank is closed, the schools are closed, you know, every, all the official holidays that we as a country recognize as a day worth taking time off and being with your family are all Christian. No one's having the school closed for the beginning of Ramadan. It's Christmas. That's all that our country cares about. We've already codified Christianity into our fabric. We've already done too much. But now there's this, this group of conservatives, friends, publicly or not, I'm sure we'll find out in, in 20, 50 years, of Donald Trump that want to make an elite conservative paradise out of the United States. They say 
they're for the military. We support our troops. They fly the banners. We back the blue. But in reality, they want to defund the government. They are a threat to the fabric of our country. George Washington could have been a monarch. George Washington could have had ultimate power. But he wanted to have the three branches of government, the executive, legislative, and judicial. He wanted checks and balances. He wanted everyone to work together. He wanted this to be a place for everyone. This is America's a melting pot. People come here for a better way of life, for an opportunity to have the abundance of the American dream, to have access. To be able, our, our grandparents worked to have more than just the chunk of meat that they could afford for Sunday and then rice and cabbage for the rest of the week. We now live in a, in a country that is so robust, an economy that is so, granted fragile, but still so well off that you can eat prime rib every night of the week if you choose. Not going to be great for your health, but that is America today. That's not the America that existed in the 30s. That's not the America that existed in the 1800s. That took a lot of progressive ideals and ideas. A lot of our bridges and great, you know, government buildings, things that are today icons of our great nation were done by progressive, dare I say, handout labor jobs by a democratic FDR presidential administration in the 30s. CCC, um, different, you know, groups that, that did dam construction, Corps of Engineer, things that were like the, the founding of agencies in our government today. You exist. If you are a multi-generational American, you born in the United States of America, you exist and whatever benefits you have exist because your grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents either came to America and participated in these hard back-breaking labor jobs so that you can have ho-hos and Twinkies every day that you'd like. They're not just a, a rare, small batch, just one and done kind of an offering. You can now have an orange every day for breakfast instead of once at Christmas. You can have milk chocolate from Hershey's any day you want for pennies. But your grandparents and great-grandparents had to pay like an entire day's wage for like a, a treat of maybe one candy bar that they could afford per year, if that. We've forgotten how much work and dreaming has been codified into the world that we have today. And now we have a group of people who want to launch this thing called Project 2025. They want to lie to you and convince you that they know nothing about it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this was written by some weird think tank. <laughs> we couldn't possibly want to indoctrinate our children and control what books they have. Oh, wait. They're already doing it. They didn't want to have to think about other people during the conservative, during the pandemic of COVID. I have a right to not wear a mask. I can go cough and breathe on people in the grocery store all I want. I'm a Marine. I'm a Marine. I don't need a vaccine. I can. Da -da -da -da. It's so funny. You know, I, I know people that were in the military and all like, oh, Semper Fi, we, you know. But then totally like didn't about face and like, oh, you can't tread on me. I, I don't need a vaccine. Like 
So how many orders did you not follow when you were in the military? Why did you join the military? Did you truly ever back the country? But it's frustrating that they don't want to be told to consider other people, to be woke, to give a damn about anyone else's feelings or health or quality of life. They want you to have to pop out that baby, no matter how it was created. And guess what? If you're too poor to raise that child, or you're homeless, or it has some kind of birth defect, they don't care. And you better not ask for a health handout, WIC, food stamps. You and that baby need to work. Shit. They'd probably roll back labor laws if they could. Wasn't that long ago. Children were working in factories, sweatshops. They want to roll back all the labor standards that we have in this country that say that is not who we are. We do not allow children at age 10 to become maimed, dismembered, or killed by working in factories. And the trade-off was working with immigrant workers, field workers, people that wanted to come here at at a lower wage to do the jobs that we privileged white folk can't be bothered to do. How many white people do you see breaking their backs, picking lettuce and potatoes and vegetables. How many? I know of a few people. It's not unheard of. Some have done a season or two. They have been around it. And, and kudos to them. This is not a statement about them. But the majority of Americans don't want to pay a fair wage to workers they haven't talked about the minimum wage increasing from 725 since 2009. It's the longest that we've gone without an increase. And never mind the fact that that wage was set back in the 30s when the government said, you know what? You deserve to work. You deserve to have a quality of life, the ability to pay for food and housing. But for some odd reason, since 2009 with the tea party and now the MAGA people we've it's been ramping up against that. They're trying to defund the government and every time they cut budgets and every time they, you know, spend more money blindly on pet projects that go towards military efforts that are are completely fruitless. They're, they're, in a weird roundabout way, legitimizing what they're saying. You know, the IRS can't go after everyone who's evading taxes. They don't have enough staff to do it. They don't, they haven't been fully properly funded. And that's because of decisions by conservative people saying, Oh, we need to cut, cut spending. Oh, whoops. The IRS can't do their jobs. Convenient. Now they're the ones breaking the tax laws can't be, prosecuted and then when you know big occasional things blow up oh see the the federal government can't do this so why do we even have them that's the conservative narrative and that's not right we need to fully fund our government and the way we do that is by taxing the rich by taxing every single entity churches businesses everybody pays their fair share i'm even for a flat tax rate everybody pays the same 10% to you is going to be the same 10% that Jeff Bezos has to pay or Elon Musk. Think about the funding to our country if everybody paid their fair share. People wouldn't be homeless. We could actually have these great programs. We could refill the coffers of Social Security that our conservative politicians dipped out of without a plan to pay back because, oh, we didn't think about that. We 
we need to actually stand up from now on every single election cycle. You have to vote. You have to take a stance. If you're sitting there, well, I don't like either candidate. I, I really don't. You can't do that. If you sit on the sidelines, you are supporting the negatives of everything possible. The centrist argument is complete bunk. It's crap. You have to take a stance. Do you want the United States of America to continue on the way that it was founded? A welcoming place for everybody of law and order of justice where people who brag about violating women are held accountable, charged criminally, imprisoned, and not allowed to be president of the United States of America. That's what we have to vote for. We have to vote for people that actually aren't taking advantage of the working class, that aren't finding and exploiting loopholes that their friends in Congress created because of their other friends who paid them for their campaigns. So I used ChatGPT and I asked it to come up with some things to talk about Project 2025. Um, I am contemplating doing an episode of reading Project 2025. It's a 900-page document. I will link to it in the podcast if you'd like to read it yourself. Again, if I do an episode with it, I will make that standalone to this. But I wanted this to be at least make you aware of it, and you need to take a stance on this. You cannot sit silent. If you have friends, family, anyone who's even remotely thinking about supporting anyone who is not of a progressive stance, if anyone, if you're support, if they're supporting any candidate that buys into any of these factual conspiracies that don't believe the election was actually won, you know, all these things that have been proven to be lies, you need to stand up and tell them that they're wrong. Even if it's your own sister, brother, friend or colleague you need to hold them accountable because guess what if they're being brainwashed you need to slap them across the face and wake them up not literally I don't advocate violence but if they start spewing what their church group has been throwing into their heads you need to press them on it you need to remind them to think for themselves you need to listen to if they can justify why they have their that belief. If if it's completely like if woohoo, they're cuckoo and they totally buy into this crap, cool. Get them out of your life. Don't associate with them. Because you have standards. And I know it. The only reason you listen to me and have followed me for this long is because we actually believe in some common stuff. We can't sit on the sidelines, folks. We can't let, you know, the warmongers and fear mongers throw around all this, these lies and, and crap and dupe well-meaning, hardworking individuals out of their votes to actually do something that benefits them in the years to come. So what is Project 2025? Who wrote it? Who is believed to support this plan for the United States of America? Project 2025 is a comprehensive policy blueprint and political strategy aimed at significantly reshaping the United States government. It is primarily driven by a coalition of conservative groups and spearheaded by the Heritage Foundation, a prominent conservative think tank. 
The project is designed to outline the policy goals and administrative changes that a conservative administration could implement if elected in the 24 presidential election. Authors and Contributors The primary organization behind Project 2025 is the Heritage Foundation, with contributions from over 50 conservative organizations and hundreds of policy experts. The document was created with input from various conservative think tanks, policy analysts, and former government officials who share a common goal of transforming the federal government's approach to numerous policy areas, including the economy, healthcare, education, energy, and national security. Supporters. Project 2025 has garnered support from a wide array of conservative and right-leaning individuals and organizations. Key supporters include 1. Conservative politicians. Many Republican lawmakers and conservative leaders have expressed support for the principles and policies outlined in Project 2025. This includes potential 2024 presidential candidates and other influential figures within the Republican Party. Two, conservative think tanks and advocacy groups. In addition to the Heritage Foundation, other think tanks such as the Cato Institute, American Enterprise Institute, and the Federalist Society have shown support or have been involved in the development of the project. Three, grassroots conservative activists. Many grassroots conservative organizations and activists back the ideas put forth in Project 2025, seeing it as a roadmap to achieving their policy goals and reforming the federal government to align more closely with conservative values. The overarching goal of Project 2025 is to provide a detailed, actionable plan that a conservative administration could implement quickly upon taking office aiming to significantly alter the structure and policies of the federal government in line with conservative principles. So they want to basically do everything that they have been beta testing for the last decade or more. I'd say two decades. This isn't new stuff. They're pretty open about it. <laughs> they don't even fully understand Antifa. They're like, oh, Antifa, that's so horrible. Like, They talk about Antifa as if Antifa is terrorists. Antifa stands for anti-fascist. Guess what? America was anti-fascist when we joined World War II to defeat Adolf Hitler. So being Antifa is a good thing. It's not right to deface public property, government buildings. There's no justification in my mind for that. From anybody. But I sure would rather, I would rather be associated as an anti-fascist than to be someone who was part of whatever the F happened on January 6th, who claimed to be patriots and stormed federal government buildings, the state capital, sorry, not state capital, nation's, nation's capital. They broke windows. They went for a tour. Remember that? They went to do violence. They, they responded to their commander, their leader, who told them, to march. Of course, he says, oh, I didn't actually incite that. I was just, it was rhetoric. But then you fast forward to this year, and that twisted dude in Butler, Pennsylvania, tried to act out against former President Donald Trump. A disgusting decision should have never happened. A complete failure. By many levels of law enforcement, Secret, the Secret Service, Pennsylvania State Police, Butler, City, County, whatever they've got going on over there. Nobody should have been able to get on that stupid roof of that building. But many factors are playing in on this. They're not fully staffed. They're not fully funded. 
they're spread thin. They've got lots of candidates, lots of people, lots of events going on. Had nothing happened, no one would have been any the wiser. Who knows how many events have gone on where there hasn't been adequate personnel. And thank God nothing happened. But we need to fully fund all federal government agencies and offices so that they can do their job, so that they can hold people accountable, so that everybody pays their fair share in taxes, so that all current, future, and former presidential candidates don't have to worry about some weird idiot on top of a roof. And then conveniently, that same person who was, oh, I didn't incite January 6th, then turns around and is like, oh, well, um, the progressives saying that I'm a threat to the country, that's what inspired this. So, so they do understand the power of words. They're not connected. It's complete hogwash. You can't... No, a deranged individual did something illegal and stupid that should have never happened, no matter what party that per- the, the person in the crosshairs was for. Never should have happened. Complete failure. I'm happy that the lady over the Secret Service resigned. She probably had a great career. She probably earned that position. But that event should have never happened. She couldn't answer questions in Congress that were already available through the news media, publicly available. No. That's not America. That's not American values. Everybody has the right to think the way that they think, to vote the way that they want. But you shouldn't face violence against you or criminal action for exercising your right to go get a vaccine or read a book. You shouldn't be prosecuted in our country for going to another state to seek health care options that aren't available in your own. We are the United States of America. We are supposed to believe in a federal government. We are supposed to believe in the unity of our founding fathers. We are supposed to have a living, breathing constitution that adapts to what we know today. When that document was written, the toilet didn't even exist think about that indoor plumbing they had no way to know that you deserve to have a sanitary place to take a poop but guess what we don't even think about it it's unquestionable why would we why would we say you know if you if you make less than this you don't deserve to have access to to public sewers you need to go poop in a hole in your backyard But that's what these people are wanting to do. They're wanting to make an America for them, and they want you to get out of their way. And by you, I mean anyone who's making less than $300,000 annually. This fires me up. So what are the most concerning aspects of Project 2025? And what are the risks to the United States of America if this idea is implemented? Project 2025, a strategic plan developed by the Heritage Foundation and other conservative think tanks, outlines a comprehensive agenda for the next conservative administration. The project encompasses a wide range of policy areas, aiming to roll back many regulations and initiatives established by previous administrations, particularly those related to environmental protection, social policies, and governmental oversight. Here are some of the most concerning aspects and potential risks if Project 2025 is implemented. 1. Environmental Regulations Concerns Climate change 
The plan advocates for the rollback of many climate-related regulations, including those aimed at reducing carbon emissions and promoting renewable energy. Pollution. Deregulation could lead to increased pollution, impacting air and water quality. Risks. Global warming. Increased carbon emissions could accelerate climate change, resulting in more frequent and severe weather events, rising sea levels, and ecological disruption. Public health. Higher levels of pollution could lead to respiratory problems, cardiovascular diseases, and other health issues. Two, healthcare policy, concerns, Medicare and Medicaid. Potential cuts to funding and eligibility for these programs could reduce access to healthcare for millions of Americans. Affordable Care Act. Efforts to dismantle the ACA could leave many without insurance. Risks, uninsured population. A significant increase in the uninsured rate could lead to worse health outcomes and higher health care costs in the long run. Economic impact. Increased health care costs and poor health outcomes can negatively affect productivity and economic growth. Con 3. Social policies. Concerns. LGBTQ plus rights. Plans to roll back protections for LGBTQ plus individuals, including in employment, health care, and housing. Reproductive rights. Efforts to restrict access to abortion and contraception. Risks? Civil rights? Erosion of civil rights protections can lead to increased discrimination and social inequality. Public health. Restricted access to reproductive health care can result in higher rates of unintended pregnancies and associated health complications. 4. Economic policies. Concerns. Tax cuts. Proposals for significant tax cuts for corporations and the wealthy could reduce government revenue. Deregulation. Reducing regulations on businesses could lead to increased financial instability and consumer risk. Risks. Income inequality. Tax cuts primarily benefiting the wealthy could exacerbate income inequality. Economic stability. Deregulation could lead to financial crises similar to the 2008 recession. And five, education. Concerns school choice. Emphasis on school choice and voucher programs may divert funds from public schools. Curriculum changes. Potential for changes to school curricula to reflect conservative viewpoints. Risks. Educational inequality. Diverting funds from public schools could disproportionately affect low-income and minority students. Quality of education. Curriculum changes may undermine the quality and comprehensiveness of education. 6. Judicial appointments. Concerns. Conservative judges, emphasis on appointing conservative judges, could influence the interpretation of laws for decades. Risks. Judicial bias. A heavily conservative judiciary might lead to decisions that roll back civil liberties, environmental protections, and other progressive policies. 7. Foreign policy. Concerns. Isolationism. Potential shift towards more isolationist policies could affect international alliances and trade agreements. Military spending. Increased military spending at the expense of diplomatic and development initiatives. Risks. Global influence. Reduced global engagement could diminish U.S. influence and leadership on the world stage. Security. Overemphasis on military solutions could lead to conflicts and instability. 8. Immigration. Concerns, restrictive policies, stricter immigration policies, and increased deportations. Risks, labor market, restrictive immigration policies could lead to labor shortages in certain industries. Human rights, increased deportations and border enforcement could result in human rights abuses. Conclusion. Implementing Project 2025 could lead to significant changes across various policy areas, with potential risks including environmental degradation, increased inequality, economic instability, and erosion of civil liberties. The long-term impacts on the United States could be profound, affecting not only domestic well-being, but also the country's standing and influence globally. So there's a lot to unpack in all that. But as... This is still, you know, yes, right now it's it's a, just a document that some group of political elite of the conservative thinking drafted up. But they want this to be their world. They want the poor people to get out of their way. They want the poor people who can't afford to pay the big pharmaceutical po companies out of pocket to die. 
They want the poor people who can't afford to go to college to join the military, go fight in stupid wars, and be killed. That's what the conservatives want. There was a conservative recently that was talking about the whole inflation uh, situation. I, f- I wish I re- could remember who it was. I'll have to look this up at some point. But they said a good war would help reset the country. That is what conservatives want. Have you noticed that so many politicians are like, yeah, yeah, like they're not, they're really just kind of milk toast when it comes to like talking about like fair pay, standards of living, anything in our country. But boy, if you talk about arming some missiles or going to war, they're all about that. Suddenly they, they're amnesia, dementia, Alzheimer's, whatever cognitive issues they're having disappear. And they're full of piss and vinegar and ready to go. Because they're warmongers. They get their jollies off of going to war and spending other people's money for pet projects. Instead of having everybody pay their fair share, it sounds very ho-hum to have everyone, you know, pay their fair share and contribute to the greater good of our country. Spread the wealth around. It's not communist. Not everybody's going to get, you know, the same pay rate, no matter. A doctor's not going to be disincentivized for getting that education or whatnot compared to someone who isn't. But if you're making over $300,000 a year, you need to be paying taxes. If you run a mega church and can afford private jets to go do the will of God in other countries, you need to pay taxes. If you can stand at a pulpit and talk about policies and endorse candidates and very directly sway your congregation politically on how they should vote, you need to pay taxes. The separation of church and state is what this country was founded on. Otherwise, we would have stayed part of England. We would have still been ruled by the Church of England. We didn't want a monarch. We didn't want to have a church attached to the government at the hip. We wanted independence. We wanted to be something different. So for all the people that are like, you know, all the conservatives like, oh, if you want, you know, communism, you can go live in another country. You want this, you can go live in another country. The people that wanted to have more rights as, you know, Muslims practicing in America. If you want that, you can go live in the Middle East. Well, guess what? If you want to be a conservative person ruled by an authoritarian uh, church state, you're free to move to. There are countries that totally are on board with that. Go cover yourself in special garments and everything. That is not America. That is not what we're about. But we somehow blurred the lines on that. We put in God we trust on our buildings. We put it on our currency. We codified Christian holidays into our bank and school calendars. The poor kids that are Jewish or, you know, Hindu, any religion, they're not getting their holidays off. But the little white kid gets to have Christmas off. The fact that we can't even have that discussion as a country and acknowledge that that is the white privilege, that is the fruit of generational conservative buildup to what we have now. 
we have to atone for that. We have to say, you know what? We should have never done that. We need to amend these things and fix these things. This should be a true melting pot. This should be a place for everybody. It shouldn't be this desire to make it a homogenous Christian nationalist, Aryan, North Idaho poster boy situation. So let's detail the people and demographics who are most at risk under this Project 2025. Project 2025 is an initiative by the Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank in the United States aiming to shape policies and the administrative framework in line with conservative values. This project plans to overhaul government regulations, reduce the size of the federal government, and shift power from federal agencies to state governments and private sectors. Understanding who might be most at risk under Project 2025 involves looking at the potential impacts of these policy changes on various demographics. One, low-income individuals and families, welfare programs. Reductions in government spending could lead to cuts in welfare programs like food stamps, housing assistance, and Medicaid. Healthcare access. Changes to healthcare policies might result in decreased funding for Medicaid, affecting low income individuals' access to medical care. Two, racial and ethnic minorities. Civil rights protections. Potential rollbacks of civil rights protections might disproportionately impact racial and ethnic minorities. Economic disparities. Reductions in social safety nets and affirmative action programs could exacerbate existing economic disparities. Three, immigrants, immigration policies, stricter immigration enforcement and reduced legal immigration pathways could affect both undocumented and documented immigrants. Deportations and legal status, increased deportations and challenges to DACA, deferred action for childhood arrivals could lead to instability and insecurity among immigrant communities. Four, LGBTQ plus community. Anti-discrimination protections. Potential weakening of anti-discrimination laws and policies could leave LGBTQ plus individuals more vulnerable to discrimination in employment, housing, and health care. Health care access. Changes in health care policies might affect transgender individuals' access to necessary medical treatments. Five, women. Reproductive rights. Efforts to restrict access to abortion and reproductive health care could impact women's health and autonomy. Economic opportunities, changes in workplace protections and family leave policies could affect women's economic stability and career advancement. Six, environmental justice communities. Environmental regulations, rollbacks of environmental regulations could disproportionately affect low-income communities and communities of color, which are often situated near pollution sources. Climate change. Reduced emphasis on combating climate change could have long-term adverse effects on vulnerable communities, including those in areas prone to climate-related disasters. Number seven, workers in certain sectors, labor protections. Deregulation efforts might weaken labor protections, affecting workers' rights and safety in industries like construction, manufacturing, and mining. Union influence. Reduced support for labor unions could diminish workers' bargaining power, affecting wages and benefits. Eight, individuals with disabilities. Healthcare and support services. Cuts to Medicaid and other social services could impact the availability of healthcare and support services for individuals with disabilities. Employment protections. Changes to employment protections under the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, could affect job security and accessibility. Summary, overall, Project 2025's focus on deregulation, reducing the size of the federal government, and shifting power to the states is likely to have significant impacts on various vulnerable populations. These groups may face reduced access to essential services, increased discrimination, and broader socioeconomic challenges as a result of the proposed policy changes. I believe that... Everyone deserves a fair wage for the work that they do. Everyone is entitled to be compensated additionally 
when they go above and beyond, having labor standards like the 40-hour work week, having overtime definitions, the ability to have a health condition that you acquired through the course of your chosen work, whether a, a chemical exposure from your manufacturing company, mining hazards, physical ailments and deformities. You shouldn't be thrown out with the garbage because you gave a company a chance to give you some money for some of your time, for some of your existence. Our country is supposed to value life. And our country is supposed to protect those who need to be protected. We have the EPA because companies used to dump chemicals, gasoline, byproducts into streams, rivers, and onto the planet. We didn't know... In some ways, we didn't know any better, but in many ways, we already we knew the risk, but we didn't care. We were indifferent. Many people at the time didn't want to take a stance. They didn't care about how much lead being added to the fuel would be left for generations to come all over the dirt that children of tomorrow and five generations away would be playing in, or the defects and deformities that it would cause. We've created chemicals that are really great at putting out fires at airports. Highly combustible, refined products like jet fuel burn hard and hot. And these foam products are great at putting it out. They're more effective than water. But guess what? We now know that they're forever chemicals. They seep into the nearby ditches. They go into the dirt. They work their way down into aquifers. Every single time they were used legitimately, every single time that a local agency, military branch, what have you, practiced with these things was another deployment of these chemicals. What they thought was harmless bubbles that popped and visibly disappeared were actually coating our planet in poison. Radiation from the nuclear bomb tests in Nevada have forever impacted generations of people who weren't even didn't even exist when that happened firefighters go into burning homes of various ages and face the risk of cancers because of the smoke that they inadvertently inhale even in small amounts from these fires because Companies are finding cheaper ways to make foams, to actually stuff furniture and, and do make products that are cheaper and more affordable because guess what? We don't have a higher minimum wage because we have such an income disparity in our country that people want nice things for practically free. They don't want to pay what it costs to have an actual craftsman make something out of wood or legitimate textiles. Additionally, there's not enough workers to do those that kind of stuff. We have so many people in our country because, you know, these churches are saying, oh, you need to have four children for every adult in the family and then some spares. There are families, two people have created eight children. 
which is great. But guess what? It's a it's a tax ultimately for the next hundred years on our resources. A fun night in the sheets is impacting our our society. Those children need to pay their taxes. We can't give tax breaks to, you know, those families that have all those kids and then turn around and vote for candidates and policies that are handing out the tax breaks. America is at a crossroads this year. And we have to vote for the peaceful transfer of power. We have to vote for someone who doesn't want to be a monarch, someone who doesn't want to be a dictator, and someone who doesn't want to marginalize people who don't see eye to eye with them, who are on the other side, who are the air quote enemy, who are the flavor of whatever rhetoric Kool-Aid of the month there is. The office of the President of the United States is supposed to be the highest in the land. The man who occupied it one term ago took classified documents from the White House that are against the law and then had the gall to say, oh, if I, if I just will it into declassification, that's my right. And now he's really been given that. All presidents have been given that right by a stacked Supreme Court. Where is the accountability? What happens when we get someone in office who really actually wants to do dangerous things with that office to really become like Vladimir Putin to declare themselves the final president of the United States of America. We can't have that. We can't allow felons, abusers, people who joke about grabbing women by the privates because they'll let you do whatever they want when you're famous. People who pay hush money payments to sex workers because it could harm their campaign if if it turns out who they are. Kind of flies in the face of the traditional Christian values if uh, it looks like you're not faithful to your wife. But I guess if conservatives have no standards... They're showing who what they really care about. What's next? The church. <laughs> Stand back, Jesus. They're coming for you, bud. <laughs> anyway, you need to have an opinion on this. You need to get informed. You need to understand that Project 125 is dangerous. And the fact that it was put in writing is very alarming. Somebody wants to make this happen. Somebody wants to rehash the core principles from the Civil War that the Confederate states used and championed. They didn't go away. They lost the war, but their flag still flies around as, oh, it's a historic relic. We should have never allowed that. We needed, We should have, as a country, taken a stance and criminalized all of that. Just like in Germany, if you fly a swastika or you mention Hitler, there's laws against glorifying those who went against the country. But in America, for some odd reason, we've turned a blind eye because we are forgive and forget Christians. We should have stamped it out. 
We should have said the Confederates, people who supported the Confederate movement, committed acts of treason, just like those on January 6th who stormed the nation's capital, broke windows, stormed offices, took things, and tried to overthrow physically the government. That is not allowed. And what kind of punishment is deserved of them? I don't know. But we as a country need to say that is not, no. We are a cohesive, unified government. We are United States. Not individual states. Not states that can, you know charge you with crimes for leaving your state to go to another state because you need health care that the state you happen to be born in are financially tied to held by a court order because you your marriage didn't work out and you have a child with your ex can't move out of state that's not america What's next? Your driver's license is only valid in the state that it was issued in? We have the freedom to move state to state. You can move and drive in interstate commerce. Because we're supposed to be a unified country. We're not supposed to be this patchwork of different... Un- unalienable I don't know how to say this word unalienable un- unalienable I've heard unalienables technically right like a lien but um, basically your rights there should be a foundation of rights that you get no matter where you choose or by circumstance live State rights should come down to things of state interests, state budgets, state highways. They shouldn't have the ability to regulate law enforcement. A state, Idaho should not be sending state troopers to the state of Texas to do federal border enforcement because they're they're trying to stop stop the drugs. Meanwhile, there's people in Idaho that don't have money. They're living on the streets. They're homeless. They're underemployed. They're working multiple jobs and can't afford crap. They're being charged taxes on their income. They're being charged taxes on the fuel they buy. They're being charged taxes on their vehicles to get to work. They're being charged taxes on the carrots they buy to feed themselves. They're being taxed on the clothes they buy to cover themselves to go to work or look like a decent human being in society. But yeah, let's talk about how the liberals want to raise taxes. So vote however you vote, vote your soul. If you don't give a damn about this country, I don't give a damn about you. If you care about this country and you believe in what George Washington led and started among the founding fathers, then we can't vote for the felon to sit behind the resolute desk again. Granted, first time as a convicted felon, but still. He's played his card. He had a great plan for the healthcare overhaul. Never happened. He's never even shared it. So if he couldn't do it in the four years he had, 
why would he do it in the four years that he's asking you to give him again? We need to hold all of our politicians accountable. Don't reelect people because, oh, if you if you vote for us, we'll we'll codify this into law. But we need four more years. If they've been in power for the last four years and they didn't take care of it then, they either don't truly care about what you're passionate about or they're playing the classic political game and trying to buy your vote. We need to churn our politicians until we get people, get a new batch of actual, their word is gold, members of Congress. The president should be of the same high caliber person. Anyway, go vote, register, take a stance on something pro or anti whatever you believe in but do not sit silent force this conversation corner your family if they spew this crap that they're hearing in their closed little circle ask them why you can't be neutral we're gonna die if you remain neutral Thank you for listening to Everything with Everett. Connect with Everett and other listeners on Facebook and Twitter at Everett Podcast. Everett would love to hear from you. Share your thoughts by emailing mystory at everettpodcast.com. You can also leave a voicemail or send a text message to 208-391-2808. Choose to listen, speak with kindness, and have a great day. Hey there, it's Everett. Thank you for taking time to click on the podcast. Definitely appreciate you supporting everything with Everett. If you've ever thought about sponsoring a podcast, you know, one of those productions that aren't run by the big corporate media, as little as $12 a month can pay for the hosting service of this platform. If you want to do a one-time donation, you can visit the sponsor this podcast link on the website. It'll take you to the Venmo page, venmo.com forward slash Everett podcast. If you want to become a named big sponsor, I would totally love to hear from you. Please email advertising at everettpodcast.com. Again, thank you for listening to everything with Everett. Enjoy this next episode.